Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, this is a Captain Steve sort of show, and we're going to be going over the things that have entertained me at the start of July. This year's going extremely quickly. We're over halfway to Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully that's not made a few of you tune out already. It's probably not what you want to hear as we're in the midsummers. Anyway, <laughs> here we go. What's entertained me in the start of July? Let's jump on over to my old TV, shall we, people? I think that's probably a good place to start, or as good a place as any. So we go. Chicka pow pow! Chicka boom boom! There's my old TV. Let's make this trailer a little bit larger on the old screen. So you're probably wondering, well, what is on my TV right now? It looks lovely. It looks like a little lump of island. Well, that is Vikings Valhalla. So let's just hit play on there, shall we, people? Pow. Now, Vi I really liked the original series of Vikings. You know, the one that followed Ra Ragnar Lothbrok and Ivor the Boneless and all that sort of stuff in later seasons. If you liked that, you're definitely going to be liking this. Now, I wouldn't say it's as good. I mean, the original Vikings, I'm going to give that a freaking 10 out of 10. It was freaking great. Yeah, glue to the screen the whole time. Like Game of Thrones, but real life. Freaking lovely stuff. This is nearly as good. The story, the narrative, the characters, everything is freaking awesome. So yeah, if you was a fan of Vikings, definitely give Vikings of Valhalla a look. We binged this. I mean, I saw it pop up, new season. We hadn't even watched season one. So we had loads to watch. So we've been watching this in the background. I haven't mentioned it because I wanted to get to the end of season two before I actually did some sort of synopsis. It's brilliant. Really liked it. Season one, I was like, oh, this isn't as good as Vikings. Oh. I kept comparing it to Vikings. Just sort of sit and watch it as its own thing because it is a spin-off. It's still in the same universe, the same time zone and all that sort of shenanigans. I think it may even have some of the same writers. It's really good. Very good. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I'd give this maybe a 9 out of 10. But even then, I can't really mark it down in any way. And the only reason I'm giving it a 9 is because I gave the original one a 10. And this one isn't as good. But if there was no first Vikings, if there was no first Ragnar Lothbrok and Ivor the Boneless and all that sort of stuff, I'd probably give this a 10. If this was standalone and I wasn't comparing it to anything, it's a freaking 10. It's excellent. It really is. Very good. I mean, it hasn't got Fever Ray as an intro music. Uh, I do like Fever Ray. If you haven't checked out Fever Ray's other tracks and you like the intro to Vikings, try Viva Ray as well, people. But anyway, Vikings of Valhalla, put it on your radar if you haven't already. And if you have already, sound off in the comments. Let me know. Is this a 9? Is it a 10? Or would you rate it something completely different, people out there inside the viewers? I found it thoroughly entertaining, and it's it's a massive far removed from today's politics. It hasn't got the tick lists in there that you see in other shows. And for Netflix, that's a rarity, isn't it? Let's face it. Watch it. Give it a go. It's very good. I think you'd be glad you did. Okay, people. Well, next off on my TV of things, what have we got? We have got The Acolyte. Now, this is episode seven. Now, I know that there's not a lot of love for this out there inside of the verse. But I'll tell you what, each week, I'm actually really looking forward to the next episode, mainly because I want to see where they go with it and to find out exactly what's happening. Inside of episode seven, you actually get to see episode three from the actual view perspective of Sol, the Jedi, and why he made the decisions he made, what happened to that witch's coven because they all died. You know, we know that there was a fire, but it was obvious that they hadn't been burned to death. And we couldn't see any lightsaber burns, so we didn't think they got slaughtered by lightsabers. There was no severed limbs, so it didn't look like they had died from lightsabers. In this episode, you find out how those witches all came and met their demise. And it's a bit odd, okay? I don't want to put out any spoilers there for people, you know, because you might not have watched it yet. You know? But at the same time, this is playing with... Is everybody good or is there shades of bad in everyone? Is everybody bad or is there shades of good in bad people? And it's playing with that. Now, Disney has got that right, but I don't think they have got it right inside of this series. Where Disney got that right was in Lilo and Stitch. You know, Stitch was actually made to be a weapon, a planet ender. But this little girl, Lilo, manages to buddy up with him and turns him from being a weapon into being an actual good person by the end of it. I freaking love Lilo and Stitch. All right, so <laughs> Disney can do it and they can do it right when they really try. 
but they're trying in this and I think they're trying too hard and at the moment with political tensions and trigger points I mean we just had the Disney CEO go on camera to say that they diversity hire comes first and foremost and they've actually turned away white male actors in favor of diversity casting which in effect goes against the whole idea of diversity it's supposed to be inclusive of everyone not inclusive of, of someone just because of the color of their skin which i think that has triggered people that dropping that news from that ceo or whatever he was the hiring manager i think has triggered a lot of people for this and i think if you sat down and watch all of this season uh, season one after the last episode i'm hoping the last episode gives us even more answers to questions that we've got because there's still a whole load that haven't been answered as yet people i think this might be a show that might grow its fan base slowly i think it might be a slow burner but there's a lot of criticism out there there's a lot of youtubers and content creators giving this a massive blasting and also review scores over on rotten tomatoes it's been review bombed through the ground I'm not saying this is good by any stretch of the imagination. The writing is terrible at times. Now, it's like the two girls, the main antagonist, you know, May and Osha. They're flip-flopping all the time. However, in episode seven, it hints that they might be one and the same person, but separated. So you've got the polar opposites, the good and the bad in the two, and how maybe they need to be merged into one. And that could explain their flip-floppiness, you know, ying and yang. I'm hoping that they make it make sense inside of episode 8 because they didn't quite achieve that in episode 7. There's still big freaking question marks on this one, but it's still one to watch. I'm still rating this around about a 6.5 at the moment. We'll see how we go for episode 8. It's the last episode next Wednesday. Can't wait. I just want to see where it goes. Okay, next up entertainment-wise is The Boys, and this is the penultimate episode as well, just like, you know, Acolyte. Now, The Boys... I think in this season has really leaned heavily onto gore and sort of level of cringe when it comes to sh sexual stuff as well. To the point that Ivy has left the room, she, she no longer wants to watch this. It's not for everyone. But I really liked Boys of Seasons 1, 2, uh, and, and it, I still like this current season. Again, there's a lot of triggers inside of current politics that have been pulled into the boys. And it makes you think, well... Why? Why do that to our entertainment? You know that there's trigger points, you know that there's this friction, you know that there's this divide going on at the moment. But at the same time, if you've liked all the other seasons of The Boys, it's still the same sort of show that you've loved all this time. But there are some little sort of, there will be some triggers for both sides, left or right inside of this. And you know what? I like it because it ribs people in a roundabout way. If, as long as you can laugh at yourself and laugh at the politics of today, I think you're going to be okay with this. Just don't read into it all too much. Just sit back and enjoy it for what it is. And I can't wait for episode eight to see whether everything that there's led up in all these seasons is going to amount to much. Are they going to be able to finally take out Homelander? And what is going on with Butcher? You know, after taking all that V, there's some crazy stuff going on with him. Is it going to be the end of Butcher? Is it going to be the end of freaking um, Homelander? Yeah, the main characters could end in this season. And uh, I can't wait to see how it all pans out inside of the boys. Next episode next week is going to be freaking mental, I think, people. Because every ep uh, season of the boys, the cliffhanger has always been mental. And you can feel the tension building in this one. It's, it's good. It's good. Give it a look if you haven't already. Okay, chums, next is gaming news. Now on gaming news, over on Steam is the summer sale. Now I know this isn't going to apply to everyone, um, but at the same time, there's some pretty decent titles that you can pick up for bargain deals right now, people. Now there isn't long left to jump into here, so some of my recommendations. Firstly is Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma 2 is a pretty lovely game. Think sort of Elden Ring, but with arcadey sort of fighting and combat. It's pretty darn lovely, but there is a nice saving to have here. There is also a free to try sort of element to this right now that you can jump in, have a little free trial with it. Actually, I don't know whether that's ended or not. But yeah, take a look, see, see if it's something for you. I quite like Dragon's Dogma 2. My only drawback with Dragon's Dogma 2 is all the smaller mobs as you're playing to start out with are going to repeat themselves quite often. 
and that for me was bogging me down and stopping me from enjoying just exploring the world but i'd imagine it's going to help you level up your professions get your skills get your experience unlock new skills so i can see why they've done it it's a bit of a trade-off it's one that works for some people doesn't work for everyone but if you persevere with it i think you're going to really like dragon's dogma too i liked dragon's dogma the dark arisen more and dark dragon's dogma dark arisen the first one the graphics are good i mean they're not as good as this current one but they're still freaking good and I would say the narrative, the game, and how it progresses feels a little bit quicker, a little bit better. And it's actually cheap as chips right now. You could probably get it under a tenner. So maybe hit up Dragon's Dogma the Dark Arisen, play through that if you like it, because it's not much of a, a financial investment, and you like it enough, maybe then consider Dark Arisen, no, Dragon's Dogma 2. Another one is Nightingale. Now, I have been trying to play this on my uh, PC. I've already done one episode. If you want to see me play in the actual tutorial of Nightingale, I'll put a video somewhere over my head right now. Hit that up. Go and take a look. See at that. I think I'm going to be playing this a little bit from time to time. Every single time there's a developer's update, I think I'm going to jump back in, do another episode, progress my own sort of save with it. I do want to build myself a lovely little homestead. Anyway, that one at the moment, you get 20% off. And it's at 19.99, which is a steal, especially for a game made in the latest of Unreal Engines. And if you want to benchmark and test your actual PC and see what its graphic fidelity is capable of, as well as having a good time inside of a fantasy steampunky Victorian age type world, this is definitely one that should be on your radar if it isn't already. Have a look at my gameplay, have a look at the actual trailers, see if it actually appeals to you. The reason it appeals to me is open world, it's got procedural elements because it generates new worlds whenever you use portal cards or realm cards as they're called. It's got massive fauna inside of here that you can befriend or go up against and battle and get massive great big loot drops. It's It's got... It's got more things that I like about this than things that I don't like about this. Take a look at Nightingale. It's a good game. I'm not going to say it's an amazing game. I'm still playing it and trying to work out exactly how I feel about it. Next one is No Man's Sky. Now, if you've watched my channel, or if you know me, I'm Captain of the Steves and No Man's Sky. I love freaking No Man's Sky. I can't sing this game's praises enough. And at the moment, there's 50% off. There's also the Adrift Expedition still running on here where you can get this awesome new ship called the Iron Vulture. It's freaking great. And it's a really good expedition. It's a great way for new players to jump in and get progressed pretty far into game while having a great time and getting some great rewards. So yeah, it's well worth jumping in right now. If you haven't got No Man's Sky, this is first you're sort of seeing it. It's a massively improved game from when it first launched. There is so much, it would take a full freaking video like this length, maybe an hour to go over all the new features inside of No Man's Sky. Just jump in and be surprised. Trust me, you're going to be surprised. It's going to blow your freaking socks off. If you've, if the first, if, if you've never played No Man's Sky, it's going to be amazing. If you played it at launch, it's going to blow your socks off on, on how far it's come. It is a completely new game. Try it. Yeah, you won't regret it. It's freaking great. Okay, the last one that I'm going to feature here is Death in the Water 2. Now, this is a game that isn't very well known, but if you like Subnautica, you like Greek mythology, if you like underwater exploration and horror and jump scares this game is perfect for you i mean yeah that's a bit of a freaking niche isn't it to be fair but yeah we go it's down to six pounds and 70 pence oh my god you could spend that going to costa and getting yourself a freaking large latte couldn't you let's face it it's um that's a bargain that's a freaking bargain and i loved death in the water i've done a full playlist i've completed the game and trust me, there was a couple of brown trials and moments in there. It's quite a funny playlist. It hasn't got many watches on my channel. This is a hidden gem, okay? Hit up my playlist, take a watch, and see if it's for you. But at £6.70 or whatever it is, it, it's a sound investment. Check out Death in the Water 2. It is awesome. And it was made by two developers. If we can support them, I would love to see a Death in the Water free, or I'd love to see a DLC for this to bring in even more creatures or another another area of the map or a free roam mode or something. But yeah, a freaking great game. Really good game, that one. Um, definitely, definitely recommend that one. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to move into is Strange Tales from the Tinterwebs. Yeah, Strange Tales from the Tinterwebs. Now, uh, nicely, 
I've just ended on Death on the Water 2, which is about underwater weirdness. Well, I've got a strange tale of underwater weirdness. Oh, yeah, I do like to try and connect things together a bit. But let's jump on over to the internet screen on the side of my actual setup. So, pow, pow. And we're over on Tinterwebs now, people. So, yeah, this one is pretty unusual. Every now and again, I see this news story pop up inside of my feeds. So if I hit here and uh, it's under news, where are we? News, news. So this popped up on MSN just the other day and it says strange Stonehenge discovered in US Lake that's 5,000 years older than the British landmark of Stonehenge. Really? Really? Is it new news? This news story pops up all the freaking time inside of my news feed. It was actually discovered back in 2007. Now, something that you probably can't see from this image at the moment because it's teensy tiny. I don't know whether we can open that image, just the image itself. But I'm, I was after just the image. But then again, over on here, I think I've got images open. So you can see here the size of the diver and you can see the light from the actual torch. And when you look at the size of these these actual monoliths, these henges, I wouldn't even go as far to say that they are a henge. Now, there's also a rock under there that's got like a, a giant elephant or mammoth drew on it or whatever or painted on it. You see there? Yeah, pretty darn cool. But I don't know. They're saying that this predates the henge. That bit's probably correct. But I wouldn't say this is a henge. I think this was more like maybe they've erected these posts where people would hide behind them, wait for large creatures to pass and then jump out and spear them. Or maybe it's the remnants of some sort of old structural building. I don't think it's a henge. It just doesn't have that round sort of henge like look. There's no cross members across the top of them. It doesn't look like it was marked out to mark out astrological bodies, the sun or anything like that, that Stonehenge is said to be. This feels very much like it's some sort of building work for a structure. But at the same time, nevertheless, when you look at how old it is, it's pretty impressive. But then when you look at the actual size of the diver and you can see there the torch beam, it it's not big. It's not massive. It's it really isn't. You know, it's not a world wonder like that of Stonehenge. It really isn't. So if this story pops up on your news feed, and it excites you a little bit to think, oh my God, they're rewriting history. This story has been about since 2007. If there was any sort of credibility to it, then we would see people all over this. It would have had a massive, great big amount of funding thrown at it. We'd be unarchiving un it. We'd probably be bringing it to the surface and trying to understand it better, doing more studies. The studies we've done dates it, but at the same time, it's not a new henge. It's not a stone henge from millennia beforehand or anything like that. They're overcooking this one to get you to click onto their website. Hopefully stay there and look at a few more things. That's that's all this is. OK, so, yeah, don't get suckered into this one, people. OK, so lastly people what's going on with my channel what's going on with me inside of life the vloggy type stuff you know where am i doing in world well i've been very busy 3d printing stuff for the actual meetup i've also been 3d printing things for those that backed my actual youtube channel and the build of the new pc so I'm, i've got these lovely little gift boxes all lovely and black open it up there's a set there ready to post out now, I was thinking about putting in a No Man's Sky dice in here, one of those portal dices for random portal exploration. However, what I thought would probably be more useful is some actual glue that doesn't melt the 3D model, that is very good for holding it in place. So I'm putting in some super glue in there as well, so they can actually build their ships. So that's one part of the ship, okay? So you can get an idea of scale. However, Blue Pre to Starly, here's one I made earlier. Now, this is in a slightly duller PLA. This is just my sort of test print. And this is my own one that I've glued together using this same glue. And that's the actual finalized item there. Also inside of this box is a Atlas card stand pack, which looks like this again in the dollar PLA. And that one's actually got the Starborn runner on that side. On that side, it's just got the Atlas pass level four. And it just free stands. You can just stand that on your mantelpiece or wherever you want to stand it, pride of place. 
And that's all inside of this box. There's one ship and there's one sort of stand pack in there. And that's going out to the people that supported my PC build. Now, I'm not going to be closing down that tier inside of Patreon. All I'm going to do is remove this bundle for a, for now. I mean, well, forever. Um, so, yeah, if you did miss out on the opportunity to back my channel, you've missed out on that opportunity right now, people. So when I say missed out on the opportunity, I mean the opportunity to get 3D printed items packaged and posted out to you. I have now amended that Patreon tier. I'll jump on over to Patreon and just show you what I've done quickly, people. So here we are over on the good old Patreons. And um, yeah, I might be able to zoom that in a little bit more. Let's uh, zoom that in just a tad more. Okay, so this, this actual one here was the 3D printed tier at £15 a month, and that was to back my PC build. I've now changed this to be a channel growers, the 07 Bridge Crew. So this is going to be paying for subscription services like, you know, PlayStation Plus to Sono AI and anything else where I might need to grow my channel out. I'd imagine with AI taken aboard, there might even be something that might help with my thumbnails in future, things like that. At the moment, a lot of the stuff that I use is free, so there is no cost. But yeah, it's to help fund the actual direction and evolving of my channel. And perhaps even I might put polls out to this group on what game I should purchase and bring to my channel next when I've got a little bit of a quandary. So these people will have a say in channel direction when I'm not too sure of channel direction. Okay, but I'll reach out to them. You don't need to reach out to me and say, hey, try this. Well, you can if you want. You've got my social details. It comes as a perk with that level. But I'm scrolling up a little bit further. I've also got this. That's been there since freaking the dawn of time. And again, you also get social media access on there. You can hit me up with inside of Patreon and message me. I try to respond within like 48 hours. And then there's also this one which just gives you end of video mentions, all that sort of stuff. And a heads up if I ever put 3D printed items over over on um, eBay, I believe, something like that. But then there's another one there too as well, which as long as I've got places at the end of my videos, I'll, I'll still mention you at the end of videos, but it's just you know, back in my channel and helping keeping the channel going and keeping me doing content, at least one video a week or two times a week. Yeah, there we go. So there we are. That's all the actual Patreon levels. Don't forget, I've also got youtube memberships as well if you prefer to back me on youtube because inside they get a few more perks when it comes to uh, live chat because i'm hosted through youtube you get to use emojis and things like that so yeah check out that check out both and see which one is best for you but yeah i do want to say a massive great big thank you to everybody that backs my channel and everybody that just watches and interacts through comments, hitting the likes and subscribes and sharing my videos, you're all freaking awesome and you're all helping keep my channel going. Even if it's not through financial driven things, just watching my channel though does help because that adds to the click revenue that um, I get through Google AdSense. Okay, so thank you very much everybody in the Viewerverse. I'm pretty much ready now for the No Man's Sky meetup, which is happening at the bank holiday at the end of August over here in the UK, over in Guildford. I'll try and put something on the screen right now so you know the actual dates, times and where it's happening. If you do want to come along to that, you're based in the UK or, or if you're coming over from wherever, it'd be awesome to see you there. We're going to do a, a quiz. We're going to do um, raffle giveaways with lots of 3D printed items. Some things pretty darn cool. It's like I've got a mini version of that Alpha Vector ship. So anybody that wins the actual quiz will get a little mini one of these. The stand just fell off the bottom. But yeah, pretty darn cool. Where's it gone? It got caught on a wire. <laughs> you can see that I uh, do this sort of live in a roundabout way. But there you go. These are going to be to those that actually win the quiz. So they're all going to get one of these each. Yeah, they're going to have to assemble them and glue them together. I'll probably bring a couple of spare pots of glue to the actual meetup. The only thing is, there's people are going to be drinking alcohol and I don't want to see people walking around with bits of ship or glue to their hands and causing a medical emergency. So maybe not taking glue to the event is a good idea. Yeah, I'll probably just give you it in a, a deassembled kit and you're going to have to get your glue yourself. But yeah, that's, <laughs> that's quiz prize winners type stuff. So anyway, in between now and then, I've done all the 3D printing. There's a few other bits I've got to get ready and bits and bobs in the background but i think i'm all set for the actual meetup hopefully you guys are too 
And I think that's pretty much everything. As for channel direction, I want to do more videos like this. More Captain Steve talks type stuff. Cup of teas with Captain Steve. I haven't got a cup of tea with me. I needed the space on my desk for all these bits and bobs I wanted to show at the end of the video. So I'm a bit parched. I'm going to go grab a cup of tea in a moment. I, uh, I do have my own brew of tea. I put something just there so you can see it. But it's in cherazina.co.uk. You can get tea. Captain Steve's brew. It's a breakfast tea. It's a lovely tea. Try that. Anyway, that's the shameless plugs done. I am hoping to do a little bit more Nightingale on my channel. Um, now that I've got the PC up and running. I do want to try and get my PC No Man's Sky save up to standard of my PlayStation save. So I need to do like, you know, the Traces of Metal, the Outlaws type one, you know, the Voice of Freedom. There's a lot of missions that I still need to do on my PC No Man's Sky save. I'm going to be doing those live on a Monday or Tuesday. Just keep an eye out. I'm also launching an arena, a No Man's Sky arena for battling at PVP level. And I'm doing that on my PlayStation 5 save. And I might do that on a, a Monday or Tuesday. I need to lock in what I want to do on a Monday and what I want to do on a Tuesday. So keep your eye peepers peeled for one, for that happening on the schedule. But it is mainly going to be No Man's Sky for a little while. I honestly do think we might be up for a summer update for No Man's Sky either late July to mid August. That's the sort of window where I'm sort of thinking this might happen. I'm thinking it might happen before the No Man's Sky meetup. It did previous year with the Echoes drop, but you know, you can't set that in stone. It's very sort of fluctuates year on year. We have had the summer update drop as late as September. So yeah, don't set anything in stone. As soon as the signs start happening, I would let you know, and then we can all get aboard the hype train. Heck yes! Because Sean of the Murrays did say this year will be a big year for No Man's Sky. Shall we just remind ourselves of what Sean of the Murrays said? I think we shall. Well, to start with, uh, next year is going to be a really big year for No Man's Sky. Like you said, I've been working on it for 10 years now, and I still really love it, still really enjoy it. So there we go, 10 years of No Man's Sky stuff. It's a beautiful game. If you haven't already picked it up, like I pointed out earlier, it's on sale. Not for much longer though. Jump on in. And the Adrift update, the actual expedition, is running until I believe the 15th. Now they normally close that down like 24 hours beforehand in people joining the expedition. So even that's got a limited window and it's quite a big one, this one. It took me roughly about three to four hours to do it. I think you could comfortably do it if you're a new player picking it up, probably maybe in six to eight hours, depending on competency and uh, understanding of the game. It is quite a complex game, but it's not as complex as things like, you know, Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen when it comes to flying the ship and stuff. It is quite arcadey in feel. Anyway, people, that's everything I've got for you. Anything more would just be waffling, so I'm going to end it here. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.